Hi, welcome to Last Bastion's unboxing and looking at SPQR from Warlord. Uh, I'm Matt, you know me if you've watched my channel before. This is Jack. Hi. He was here last week. Uh, he's filling in at the minute for Josh. I am. And he's going to be back, hopefully more, um, because he's more interesting than, than Josh, but don't tell Josh. Um, <laughs> that is a complete lie. We're like, we're like good buddies. Yes, uh, we've known each other for a very long yeah. time. Unfortunately for you. <laughs> Don't deny it! No, not <laughs> um, at all. So, we're going to be looking at the main set, uh, looking at some of the rules, and maybe looking at some of the hero cards if we need to. And then we're going to get some proxy models and maybe have a playthrough if it's not midnight by the time we finish. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see how the game system works. If, if we don't get the playthrough, we're going to do a video next week. Yeah, yeah, I'm all over. Um, so, without further ado, we've introduced me, you, Last Bastion, SPQR. SPQR. Do you want to break the seal? Yeah, if you've got the... And should we show pe the lovely people what is yeah, contained? Yeah, give it a spin and everything. Oh, so, included in the lovely box set, are you going to do like a zoom in? Apparently. I tell you what, let's just do nature zoom. It's not working. Josh, it's not working. Where is it? Where is it when you need them? I don't so, know. So, nature zoom, you get, what do you get in that? You get, is it 40, uh, yeah. Celt? <laughs> yeah, so... You get something. Uh, eight uh, legionaries with swords, eight legionaries with um, spears, one Roman hero. Yeah, it's not working. 40 Gauls um, with spears, 12 with bows, another Gaul hero. So you get quite a lot of miniatures, mm -hmm. as well as obviously all the stuff to play the game. Cool. And 12 six-sided die, because we need a lot more of those. Got very nice uh, box art as well. Yeah, yeah. I quite like that, I must admit. Um, it's not too shabby. I'm All wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it meets up, though. I was like, what the hell's he doing? He's just sort of javelin to this guy. See if you can get a close-up. A peel him, sorry. See if you can shout to the viewers. <laughs> The, the, the impaling of the... I'll be honest, I saw it on the back and I was like, I don't know how to pronounce that word. But I'm not a Roman, so I, I wouldn't know. I mean, I call it a pilum. I think it is a pilum. Is that, is that going to so, be of the guy being... That's in. I'm going to point it on the box. Impaling of the guy, the Celtic guy. There's the, there's the pilum going through the guy, and if you trace it back, the, the, the shaft is there, and the guy through it is here. Box art, that makes sense. I like that. I yeah, like that. right. Let's crack it open. Have you got the yeah. knife or not? Oh, I'll just put your nail down it. <laughs> I'm not as organised as Josh. Josh normally cuts the back for me, so I've just got to. It looks sealed, but it's not sealed. No. We cheat. Josh, Josh, Josh's unboxing is way better than mine. You miss Josh. He plans. Mm. He plans. Oh man, that smells nice. I wish I could. Uh, I'll get a new camera to get closer. Oh man, it says it along the sides. It's got all the different unit packs. Yeah, it's got... Um, weren't we being asked about Greeks earlier on? We were. Yeah, it's got like a load of different unit types down the side of the box. So. Oh yeah, you've got like, Thebians, Persians, Persians, Greeks. There's like some heroes there. We've got Samaritans. You've got... Samatians, sorry. Versingatorax. Numidians. The Numidians. Versingatorax. What the hell's a Versingatorax? Versingatorax. Versingatorax, according to Sean, our man behind the scenes. Macedonians, Romans. You can get Julius Caesar. Yeah. But who wouldn't want Julius Caesar? Versingatorax was a very nice Celtic king. Oh. We have one very... Thick rule book, I must Indeed. Say. I mean, I've got, I've got two here. I'll just move these to one side. Man, that it's is... It's quite nice. It's quite well laid out. I had, yeah. I had a flick through the... Yeah, it's pretty nice spot. so far. There's some um, nice images in it's there. It's quite bright. It? It's easy to read. Well, there's a lot more armies that we were talking about. Oh. Um, uh, Britain, Caesar's Legion, Gaul, Germania, Macedonians, Sparta. For Sparta! <laughs> I knew it. I thought I knew straight away. I was like, I bet he says it. Uh, I just wanted to have a kind of look. What? Oh, so like mercenaries are like people from all over. 
and there's a bunch of place names that I don't want to pronounce because I don't think I can do it. One of our viewers has just said, the Celt got impaled by a Roman shaft. Historically accurate, whichever way you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Rape and pillage, here we come. Oh man, war More elephants. elephants. In skirmish. That looks... That feels like ticking a goddamn Lehman Russ in a kill team. Yeah, know. yeah, pretty much. Oh, that, I mean, that is some big ass. Again, I'm getting caught up there. Mm. I mean, it's, it's a nice book, I quite liked it. Well, well that's a right. very interesting way to do a quick reference guide. It's uh, like. They do it with all the boxes then. The quick reference guide is, is keeping everything in, in the box. I like that, I like that a lot. So, I mean, your quick reference right there is pretty much everything you're going to need to play the game. I'm curious to see whether it is. That would be nice if it was. There's your hero cards. Hero we're cards. Why have we seen they're resin? They are definitely resin. Is it that cheap Chinese resin? Uh, not from the looks of it. That's... The brittle stuff. Not my favourite thing in the world, that the heroes are one piece. But, I mean, it means that they're easier to play straight out I, I've just got the thing stuck. I, when I went to go visit Warlord, I saw the guy... Um, who was sculpting these. Oh yeah. I saw him sculpt him sculpting. And he was talking to me at the same time as sculpting them. That's crazy. That's how skilled the guy was. I didn't even make a mistake. And he was just talking away about his job and stuff to me and sculpting. That lady packed for you. You know what? They've got quite a few people packing and every time I open a box, her name is the person who packed it. It's are almost like sure? she packs it especially for me. I was going to say, are you sure that yeah, there are people or is it just this one lady? Because, I mean, again, it's the first time I've ever seen this I in said, a box. I said, I said to the guy when I was there, I was like, um, Mirella. Where is she? It, where is she? Oh, well, she's in there with them. I says, well, I, I just got the feeling that she was the only person who worked for you. Did you go through and there was like an octopus? Just sat <laughs> in the middle and she Mirella's was like... Mirella's an octopus, yeah. Yeah, boy. And yeah, it's hilarious because... This isn't only her packing, but I never open a box. He says, oh yeah, she only boxes up so-and-so. I'm like, nah, I've got her name in nearly everything. So either they've just got a massive pile of these, that they just, Everyone's any Morella. Tom DeCanary is Morella. Yeah, I'll put my Morellas in in case there's a fault. She'll get told off. Maybe that's just, just animosity towards her. Maybe she's that good at a job. They actually try and catch her out by misboxing something and putting her name in it. I'll be honest, it is a nice touch though to know who boxed It is a nice touch to know who boxed your stuff. Right, it so is. this is the, the creme de la creme that I came yeah, with. It's so. like a one night stand and remember the girl's name. Right? I went there. I'm just trying Sorry, guys. to see the miniature quality. Um, I'll be honest, I quite like the miniatures. I think they're quite... I like the options that they give you. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of I've seen before is they do that weird Playmobil hand thing and you can put what you want in yeah. but it doesn't have a moulded hand and I'll be honest I, fa I find that somewhat it's not just restricting as much as dictating yeah I'm not its biggest fan I'd prefer to just have a moulded arm and you put the arm where you want it but again they're nice sculpts I quite like, uh, I mean, some of these Romans are really pretty. Um, the archers are all one piece as well. Hmm. So I don't know, I mean... And resin, which is nice. Well, rather, rather, rather than metal, so if they've got a mould line, you can, cook, you can cook, cut it off easier at least. Yeah, but like I say, these are really nice. One thing I'm noticing... Yeah? ...is the unit card. Okay. It's 45 denarii for a... Goal hero. Do you think that's their point system? It is, but in all fairness, denarii wasn't the currency of uh, Gaul. No, again, I worried you brought me in for a historical thing. But, and but I struggle with historical. Um, <clears throat> but that's fine. I mean, the Romans did, did pay them all in denarii, but I reckon the Gauls actually had their own currency at the time. I don't know. Did they have their own currency? Probably. Okay. Sean says probably, which means they did. I'll be honest, I don't know why Sean's not sat here, because at this point he's... Sean is full of history. He's an active historian. He should be here te telling us... I just make ...basically it. how wrong we are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just making it up as I go along. But yeah, the hero has got a list of about 20 things he can take. Small shield, large shield. Leather. You can purchase leather. 
Now, does that mean leather armour? Or does that mean just a bit of leather? Just a bit of cowhide? Just put it over your shoulder, you know? Is it a bit of leather? Uh, chainmail shirt, helmet, short spear, dagger, axe, great axe. That's a really good axe, by the way. Uh, sword, two-handed sword, bow, horse, and three javelins. Doesn't say you can't purchase all of these items. So imagine you've got, like, you know... <laughs> so he's just riding along <laughs> with, like, like a cupboard behind him. <laughs> a trail of weapons, That's which what actually I use today. That's <laughs> why you buy the horse. To carry all, all your axes. Now, I'm, I'm guessing it's like you have one weapon. Maybe we should look into this in the rules at some point. Yeah, definitely. But just on the card. Does he have, like, baseline stuff? Or do you literally have well, to he has buy got, stuff? He's got, base, he's got his move, he's got his range, he's got his melee, he's got his melee <laughs> dice, he's got his agility, bravery, armour zero, and wounds. So I'm guessing if you add a shield, it gives you something. But it gives you, like, the basic, and then you probably have to look up the rest. I suppose, as a starter set, that's handy, but if you're going to use it as an actual card on the battlefield... Yeah, I'll be honest, coming straight from the Warcry cards to these cards... It's a bit the, weird. Yeah, the Warcry cards had everything you need. Now, an, um, a legionary, he's got a peeler, not rice. Okay. Uh, purchase a peeler for... Um, Three denarii. Oh, a peeler. I thought it was peelum. What's the difference between a peelum and a peeler? Or is peelum the pure plural? Or is peeler a multiple? I'll be honest, it's the first time we've ever said something historical to Sean and he shrugged his shoulders. Um, maybe the peelum is a singular and the peeler is the, uh, what do you call it? The multiple of it. Yeah, possibly. They sound like the same thing. What's the word for that? Um, so you got the multiple? Is that a, Grouping? Is that, there's a bigger word for like more than one of, not several, but the you've got the singular or the plural, and then you've got the. Uh, can you get futsal miniatures? There are some nice historical model. Um, futsal is a company we don't get off. Uh, futsal are every now and again, warlord games will buy a load of stuff off futsal. Um, are they an individual company? I don't yeah, know if I've ever heard of them. Uh, they're an individual company. That they, when, yeah, when Warlord Games did the Operation Sea Lion, yes, they bought a load of footsaw stuff, I believe, to make the militia for the English out of. Um, and then when they ran out of the models that they bought, they basically just didn't have any more. Ah, oh, okay. So, is, does it make its own game systems, or do they just provide models to other people? I, I don't know a great deal about Futsal. Um, Again, the person asking, talking about Futsal, yeah. I'd, I'd love to know, again, if it's a company to look at. Well, whether they make their own games, or whether they just make miniatures for other games. Um, does that seem I mean, I've, I've heard of Futsal miniatures because of Warlord games, yeah. but I've never had them as a place to get models from. Um, as a supplier. Again, I, I so, know an awful lot of game systems. I've never heard of Futsal as a as a game company. But again, there's, there's games I read about every every week. So. Yeah, they've got an awful lot of that whole options, can buy this, can buy that. Uh, I'm not sure that should have been on the cards. Being it better to have had... In the codex. So. These are your bowmen, these are your close combat guys. Yeah... The the big confusion I'm getting from looking at the cards, just kind of on a cursory glance, it doesn't tell me what they get already. Or is it one of those things where everyone starts with money, buy something, if you know what I mean? That seems a little bit too... Too, too many options, I think. You know, like, Gold Tribesman. Seven Denarii. Equipment, bows or slings. Can buy two javelins, can have helmets, can have leather, can have small shield, and, or can have swords. It's like. It's getting. Why don't you give me a card for Gold Tribesmen with swords? Give them all leather armour, or not leather armour. I mean, I don't think many Gauls had leather armour, did they? I don't, for me. Most Gauls went, went in naked. Yeah, with the road paint. 
something I do know about. Um, not supposed to protect them from evil. Yeah, you're evil supposed to people. healing and properties and, you know, and all stuff like that. Try and heal I think that. we've had a reply on the foot They do Test of Honor stuff, so that would be... Is Test of Honor the Japanese game? Test of Honor's a Japanese game, which Warlord games are having less and less interest in. I think so, we played, didn't we play the starter set? And it was a bit over complicated. It was, it was one of those games where nobody hit, and if you don't hit, then it just becomes a slog. The miniatures were really pretty, because I don't think anyone does really nice, like, Japanese miniatures, but, um, no, I didn't think we enjoyed the system very much. Really weird thing. Caesar's Legion's Hero is a smaller card to the rest. Strange. Hmm. Small, small minor, minor thing. So. Yeah, um, as I was saying, is I, I think sometimes with um, historical stuff, is it's very, it's noodly, if you know what I mean. Hmm. It's a lot of like, I want these guys to have this and this and this and this and this, and it just seems hmm. very noodly. Soft resin. Is that the... See how it bends. Have they got any mold lines? Because if not, it's not casting, is it? It'll be using the, the 3D printer. 3D printer. Well, it has got... Um, the tags. Tags. Like 3D prints. No, no, they're not a tag for casting. Uh, I don't know, because a lot of the 3D prints now have all the tags around the outside that you rip off. It doesn't... It smells a bit. It doesn't smell like resin. No, it smells like... The only way to find out is to cut, is cut it in half and see if it's solid. Which we definitely shouldn't do. Uh, I think that is finely cast... It, it definitely finely cast resin because if you have a look on the base there's a mould line. Yeah. There's a mould line. Halfway through. Yeah, straight through it. Where 3D print... There's also a mould line on his cloak underneath. Mm. But, really nicely... I'll be honest, I'm There's no mold line on the across miniature. the miniature itself. I can see the tiniest one on this guy's helmet, but I bet when you paint it, you wouldn't even be able to see that. So, either this is the first run, and the, the molds are absolutely amazingly new yeah, and pristine, and maybe in another thousand casts we'll have a shit model, or they're just really good at casting. Yeah, I like when they take the mold line into things, because I'll be honest, I love GW, but you spend a good 15 minutes with every set going around the mall. Um, interesting, I have been to, I mean, I had a lovely guy, guided tour of Warlord Games' place, yep. and the, the lady who um, makes the master resin mould, yep. she isn't actually a trained resin caster, she's just an everyday person who looks at the best way that she can see to cast something. Because the theory is, if you're trained solely in a certain technique, you will only use that technique. Yeah, 100%. If she can't do something, she'll go on Google and look it up and find somebody else who's had the same problem. And they've actually got a guy from Forge World who works with her. Uh, he cuts the mould open. He finds the best way to cut the mould. So she'll make the actual master mould and he will cut, cut, cut the mould. Oh, okay. So she looks at all different ways of casting. Um, and I reckon this is her work. Yeah. I mean, um, because when I was looking at the Korean stuff they were bringing out, yeah. which I, I, I can say it now, I've had to keep that secret for ages, when I was looking at the Korean stuff they were making, she was making master moulds and then they were casting them when I was there. And some that cast in the morning were like, or yesterday or something, were like ready. And they were just splitting them open. And I, and I was just like, really? Not a single mould lay on it. Crikey, I mean, straight out, that's just straight, straight out of the cast. And they're doing like hun hundreds, splitting these open, doing hun hundreds of them. I like that idea. Not a single one. The all they had were like the bit, of the bit of resin tag on the end. I like that idea, though, so, of using somebody that this is not their normal profession, so to speak. If, you, if, you, if you've been, oh, I'm not sure you have or not, but if you've seen some of the earlier castings from Warlord yeah. before they got her, and then the ones now. I've seen some of their better. metal casts that are really um, Some of the really old resin stuff was just full of imperfections. Mm. And she, she gets it so that the cast has no imperfections. Yeah. Which is really interesting. I pick up an awful lot of the Kickstarter stuff, and I'll be honest, you can tell where 
they've got professional advice and where they've not had professional advice. They don't actually use a mould release agent either. They just oh. use a very high quality resin and a very high quality silicone. So they don't... Because again, I don't know a great deal about it, but I know with mould making you dust something on the inside, don't you? I think uh, usually it's corn... No, it's either corn flour or chalk. Again, this is something Sean would know a lot more um, about because he's done. And whatever it is they use, it is the lightest, lightest amount they put on. They literally just go pop, 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 and some have to cake it with it, yeah, or use like an oil or something. But their the resin they use is so good, and the silicone moulds are so good mm. that they can do like undercuts and stuff, and still pull the mould out without the mould sticking. Oh, that's nice. I mean, I was looking at some of the stuff they were doing and they had like an undercut on a Jeep. Yeah. And they pulled it off and it just went bloop and just left this wonderful... I mean, there's, there's no reason for it because you can't paint underneath it. No, no. But it just looks nice. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a craftsmanship, so isn't yeah, it, really? It's, it's weird how a company like Warlord Games is putting a lot of money into making better casts. And then you look at fine cast. I think that's what what we've said many times. I know me and you have had the conversation a few times. The problem, my biggest issue with, and again, I love Games Workshop. I have a Games Workshop tattoo. They don't have enough competitors that makes them want to be better. I mean, because just because Warlord Games have made this really, really nice, and this is really gorgeous. Yeah. It's a lovely model, well sculpted, and cast brilliantly. Will that stop me going and buying a... Games Workshop Finecast model for my next army? No. Mm. <laughs> because it's still... They are the big dog. You know, it's like, do you go to Tesco's or do you go to the corner shop down the road? Go to Tesco because Tesco's has got a lot more variety. Yeah, oh, and it's... It's the brand, isn't it, really? I, I mean, mean, I went to a corner shop the other day, paid pound sixty-five for a pack of chocolate hobnobs. Went to Tesco and they were quid. Being the greedy sod I am. I thought, well, I'll get three packs of chocolate hobnobs now for the same price as two. Yeah. So I go and buy three packs of hobnobs. And enjoyed all four packs. And, and enjoy, enjoyed them. <laughs> because I could. Because I thought, oh, well, it's better value. So I went for the better value option but bought, bought more of them. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's like myself. I'm, I'm the little guy on the street. Mm. People go to the bigger guys because you get more for your money. Yeah. So oh, it's nice. quite a fight. And, you know, this... Really nice models. You've got to you've got to go away to step out. Um, I feel like that's why a lot of companies do the historical stuff because GW isn't doing anything historical. I mean, this this is really nice. There's only a couple of things you need to take off this model. No, like I said, that mod line on the helmet there, I think you can paint right over that and you'd never see it. A lot of detail. Yeah. I'll be very interested to paint these. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a lot of fun to paint. I've just seen the, are they shield transfers? Yes, shield transfers. Those are nice. Those are How really nice. Is. It means that you're not doing... Asterix and Oblix were his favourite goals. I'd be, would, I, as sad as it is, I would love to see them do it. Like an Asterix and Oblix, but I bet they wouldn't just because I, it's more realistic what's stuff. What's he doing? Is he looking at where his arrow went? Yeah, I'm guessing so. I'm guessing he's just got a... That's not his finger. I'm guessing it's just a tag. Yeah, it is. Again, we're really nice castings. Really nice models, please. Yeah, these transfers are really nice. Like, freehand. Because that... Well, you've got a different one, Matt. Your transfers were packed by Tilly. Uh, got somebody there. Any questions? I'd like to know why Tilly and Morella are competing for my love. Because I'll be honest, like, I see some really nice freehand shields and I think they look super pretty but I, I just can't put the, commit the time to it I think that this you would can't, save you can't beat a few transfers yeah I think this would save so much time to be honest looking at these I actually want to do Celts yeah would you do the Celts I really would like to do Celts because um, just because the models are I don't know so looking pretty. at the Romans I quite like the Romans ah, but the Romans are all on plastic nah, I'm okay with that I'd do some converting. I'd change my arms around. I've just been able to look at their bases. I kind of like... Um, 
it gives you a, a lot more, I would say, room to do something in the base mm -hmm. with that little lip, you mm -hmm. know, to work like sand into it. That's, that's what like I've that. liked about um, bolt action. Same basis for bolt action, and I think it's the nice because you can put the text, the textured paint on them, mm -hmm. and you still got a nice lip, but it doesn't raise it too high. Oh, okay, yeah, because that is one of my biggest complaints with like putting sand on a GW base. It's just like, and it goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. but no, I like these. I think these are really pretty. Oh, and they've got the logo on the back as well. And the Romans. I mean, these are the same Romans that you got. Uh, this is just identical to uh, what was there before and same plastic same mold i think they're they're not bad actually they're, they're nice figures they've stood the test of time yeah i, I mean i really like the the chain mail detailing on the metals i think is quite nice usually a lot of companies it's quite crisp, just, isn't it? yeah a lot of companies just do like a blur and it doesn't seem to be like a like a blur, really. And then just go live a life in the park. <laughs> Only somebody of our age would get that one. Yeah. The Brit pop culture. Tony Blair, interestingly. Yeah. As I heard the other day. Uh, used, used, used to be in a band. Okay. That's why he got down with the kids, as they say. He was so hip when he became Prime Minister. When I went because to... he was in communique with all the rock stars. Oh. Um, where, so when he did all his interviews about Britpop back in the Prime Minister and stuff, he actually knew what it was on about, whereas someone like that should have had a, a recce sheet to read off. He was just like, yeah, well, it's just a call because I'm down with the kids. When what I... made him quite popular. When I was a metal worker, we did a job for Tony Blair. Not a story, I will tell on stream. <laughs> but uh, a very interesting story, so to speak. We made him some uh, crotchless no, chassis belt. It was some iron gates for his driveway, and then we did a balustrade inside his house. I think I'm saying balustrade right? Inside his house, and it was like I say, not a story I would ever tell on stream. But he was a. Uh, I never dealt with him. Um, I also. They, it was one of the things where they had to go through like a crazy like background check. I had to have a background check just to work on it. Mm -hmm. And then the guys who were actually going to fit it, who I worked with, they had to go through an even crazier yeah, background check. I suppose check. you wouldn't want um, any old Tom Dicker having working for the Prime Minister, would you? He wasn't the Prime Minister then. He, uh, it was after he'd um, set down. Well, he wasn't the Prime Minister anymore. <laughs> I wonder if there's lots of people trying to kill him. And did you, I, I was unaware <laughs> trying to um, assassinate him until they came back that the Prime Minister the had a, a member of the Secret Service with them for the rest of their lives thank God we don't have too many Prime Ministers yeah so That's they the Secret Service. they have somebody protecting them all the time just forever even when they're not a Prime Minister they just have someone Wowzers. so uh, like I say an interesting story but we're trying to talk about SP and QR. Which is closely related to um, politics. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm guessing, I, I don't know whether politics is where these guys fell down. I think they, uh, they had a difference of opinion on a lot more than just politics. Uh, I mean, politics was definitely the downfall of the Roman Empire. Uh, yeah. And also the downfall of, of Alexander. He only died because somebody else wanted his position. I'll be honest. Did they put the poison in? I couldn't tell you. Again, we might have to go to the last Bastion's own historian. Sean. Sure. I think I'll probably just shake his head. Sean, sure, did they poison Alexander the Great? What? Alexander the Great, was he poisoned? Some people think so. What? That's really bad wind. Again, that's... Uh, like, do you think so? Not particularly. Right. I'll go off, Sean. This is strange. Go on. I'm, I'm not really a fan of, like, ancient history, so... So I'm trying to scrape the resin to get the mould line off there. Yeah. And it isn't really... Have we got a fire? 
It reminds me a lot of uh, 3, 3D printed material. Yeah. Wow, just seen Gold Skyclad Warriors. We were just talking about it. He's got a little dinghy. He's oh, wearing... ding dong, hang out. They've all got ding dongs. Yeah, he is not wearing a stitch. Which I'm told was very common practice when they went fighting. Which I think is the maddest thing in the world. Freedom of movement? The, this freedom of movement, man, but you are running at somebody who's wearing armour. You've got, you've just got everything hanging out. It's fear factor, isn't it? Though, if somebody running at you with a dick hanging out, you'd be thinking, why the hell is he doing that? You, you must be mad. A hundred percent right. Right, so I've just filed that, and yeah. uh, it doesn't file very nice either. How would you do it then? You can see the rough edge it's leaving. Hmm, you're gonna have to go back across with a knife, aren't you? To you you go across with a knife, and uh, it leaves it frayed. So what the bloody hell is it made out of? I couldn't tell you. Because that, to me, has turned just taking a mould line out to not quite sure what the hell is going on. Yeah, I feel like if you're really going to get that mould line out, you might have to go back in with a liquid green stuff to clean that back up. Mm. Which is not great. No. Weird. Mm. You see, it doesn't cut, it just bends. Let me get the side off that. Hmm, interesting. Might have to ring Warlord and find out what the heck they're made out of. Yeah, it just, it, it bunches like when you, for the few people that ever have, like filing rubber. Yeah. It just bunches. It doesn't come away. Which is strange. It's like you say, it must be a really bendy. It's like when you have one of them really soft rubbers and you try and rub pencil out with it. And it just goes... Yeah, 100% that. Yeah. And it just kind of frays at the end. Have a good one, buddy. Have a good night. Bye! Yeah, that's kind of weird how it's moving. It's just, like I say, there's a big old mold line down that bow, and I feel like it'll take me a long time to get it off that bow. I mean, I'm trying to scrape that and it's not coming off. Just turning into a frayed mess. So that's the first drawback. Yeah. The I material feel, used. I feel like they don't have a lot of mold lines, but the mold lines they do from the looks of it are not very easy to remove. It must be rubber. It's got to be like a like a flexi plastic or something like that because it just doesn't want to move like normal plastic does, which I don't like. So I've gone from loving the models. Yeah, we took a one eighty on these real fast. To I can't actually cut the pieces off that he cut it off because it's not resin. And if it is resin, it's probably gone wrong. I mean, it's just fraying. It's a bit worrying. I'm just trying to take the tag off the bottom bit there. Yeah. I'm going out with a file that's just pushing it down. It's not taking it away. I just tried to cut the mould line off here. Yeah. And it's just still there. Like this is not. I'm not removing material. I'm just pushing it down. I feel like also you're definitely going to have to use super glue with this. Like I don't think plastic glue is going to touch it. Uh, it wouldn't with. Where's it resin anyway, would it? No, but I mean, I had high hopes. Yeah, I've just. It's like I'm just going at that with a knife and it's just not coming off. Hmm. Okay, Warlord, first problem. <sighs> yeah. I wonder if all the models are made out of this. Well, we've got the plastics. Are they designed for quick access? That's kind of what I'm thinking, like they're pre-built and they're already standing and I feel like you could probably take these guys straight out and be using them. Mm. No, the plazies work same. The plastics are nice. Yeah, that file's super nice. Same old same. So this isn't going to be a hit with any modeler? No, as a, as a, I model a lot more than I play, I wouldn't enjoy making this one. definitely wouldn't be able to 
clean up the models. I, f I feel like I'd spend so, t uh, so long on it. And then, like we said, I feel like I have to go back over it to kind of clear the lines over, which I don't think I'd enjoy. Mm. Whereas, I'd rather just... It's a big lump on his face. Yeah, I'd rather just be able to take a nice... Take a nice mould line off. Even if it's a, like a, a rough mould line, I'd rather be able to just take it off and then boom. Just we're no clean up. See what I'm thinking here is yeah. just cut the feet off. Off the base. Mm. Well we get bases anyway, don't we? So. And glue his feet down. But you get bases anyway. Yeah. And just treat the bottom bits as I never cool. understand why they ever do that because if they give us bases, what are you supposed to do? Make nearly four or five. Well, they're on the back of the box. Yeah, they've. Cut that, the, they cut the tag off. Hundred percent. I mean, look at that guy there. His feet are touching that thing. He's not got four or five mil underneath him. But he has. He stood. He stood on a hill. Oh, back. Oop. Yeah, no, they seem to all be stood on a hill. Yeah. So they've glued it on them, put flock around the edges. Yeah, I don't know how I like that. Everybody's stood on a hill. Looks kind of weird. So, our opinion, cut off the tag. Yeah, if if I personally was going to to buy this set, I I would a hundred percent cut off the tag with a knife or a, a nice pair of cutters, and I would glue it to the base. Um, just because I personally think that looks a lot better than the alternative, which mm -hmm. is that there, mm -hmm. and then just absolutely loads of texture paint on yeah. sand and then flock. And I, I mean, I have strong opinions on flock that you shouldn't put so much of it that you can't see the feet of the miniature. And every single one of these miniatures on the back, I can't see the feet of. They're in very overgrown land, aren't they? Yeah, but even overgrown. Not perfect battlefield. Uh... Even overgrown, like these people are running. Surely this stuff should be knocked down. No, I'm not. I'm not its biggest fan. I'll admit. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I, there's there's some really good points about the miniatures that we were talking about earlier, but they seem like a really strange casting choice, even in the plastics, to put that little base on there when you don't have to. Because you're just putting a base on top of a base, and. Mm. There's not many companies do that either. No, not that I'm aware of. Sean's come to have a look at the models. With the base on top of the base. Yeah. I just don't it's, like it. So it may well be because they were intended originally for large scale movement trays. Do us a favour while you're there. Go to the Warlord Games website and find out what they say they're made out of. It's just, oh, it's just strange material. If they've got them individually, of course. Oh, actually, it'll sound the back of the box, won't it? It should. Um, content. Where's the goal archers? Oh, they're slingers. I wonder if they're. It doesn't say on the box what they're made out of. No, I've not from what here. It does not say on the website either. Hmm. It's a secret. Strange secret. El Secretor! That's uh, El Secret. But, Don't I mean, based off of the few niggly things that we found that we're not a fan of, there's still an awful lot in this starter set that is really nice mm -hmm. that you could get set up and get playing straight away. I just think based off of this being a skirmish game and obviously we played a skirmish game last weekend. 
Yeah. I feel like I'm definitely comparing the two, uh, and I know which one's coming up trumps in my mind. Bold or sexist? <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely Walker in my mind, personally. I don't know about yourself. As far as model building goes, yeah. Um, We've not played the game. So not got through any gameplay, but as far as model building goes. Yeah. Uh, I was a lot more excited over building the Warcry stuff. Yeah. I was very excited when I saw these models. Mm. Don't get me wrong, but then finding out what they're made out of is a very strange cross between... That doesn't model well. Uh, 3D printed and resin. I mean, I'm trying to cut this with a pair of clippers and it's just not moving. It's like a rubber. It's really bizarre. Again, we've made... We've both made bottles for a very long time. It's not like this is our first time and we're just confused to how to make well, what you might call veterans. Yeah, I would certainly say so. I've made a lot of bottles for different companies. I'm sure you've made a lot more than I have. Didn't you make Airfix at one point? Yeah. Still am. When I get my commissions. Man. I got commissions. Don't people just do Airfix to get high on the glue? I do. I mean, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> It's the only reason to buy an Airfix kit is to get high on the amount of glue you've got to use on them. They're possibly the only kit that I would suggest not actually uh, buying. Because of the sheer amount of pieces and glue for such a small model. Okay, I mean, they, they stick on them, right? I just, I'm taking ages on one shield to get a mold line off the side. And it's the same material? Yeah, yeah, these shields are the exact same material. Cut, cut through it and see. Mind you, I have just cut through this, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, we've got those bases. So. It's because it cuts rough as well. It cuts strange. But hey ho, why don't you have the Gunders? Uh, I've got the rule book here. Why don't you have a look for the rule book while I'm cutting some models and bases? Oh, okay, I'm in. Tell the viewers what you think. Okay, yeah, I've read a lot of rule books in my life, so yeah, contents is laid out quite nice. They've got some really nice graphic pictures. Um, it looks like they've invested quite a lot in the models, because obviously in a lot of rule books you see a lot of artwork, and this just seems to be a lot of pictures of like the models painted quite nicely. Um, no, it seems to be need to play more and dash. There's a wow, a hero with his wing out. Oh yeah, naked Bob. No, it seems to be quite nice. Um, it seems very easy to read. Again, I'm not going to sit and read it here now. I'm, I'm a, a little bit of a slow reader when it comes to these things. But no, it seems very easy set out. Um, Again, I like the like the quality of it. It's a nice rule book. It feels nice in the hand. Um, it's, uh, it seems to go through an awful lot of options as far as how to build up units. Um, it goes through exactly what we were just talking about with all the different kinds of weapons and what okay. they do. Um, okay, so it has like a short description on what like what they are. So like a lot. Great Axe, a logical development of common axes. Hmm. And then, yeah. And then I think it kind of goes into more like, yes, yeah, scenarios, which I'm guessing is that like little campaign stuff. That's a book. Yeah, there's that, there's that very, like, people will know that very fresh print smell coming off the book. Um, yeah, it's so far. It doesn't smell like it's um, recycled either. No, definitely not. So, bad for the environment, but good for our noses, because it doesn't smell like a load of vomit. Okay, so when you're doing campaigns, because they have quite a lot in here about campaigns, they have a lot of like. They look um, like artifacts and stuff like that, like stuff you can place on units to give them like abilities. Hmm. 
These remind me of like D&D &D figures. Yes, yes. The ones that aren't supposed to be, be painted. You just get them and oh, they're the like coloured. Oh god. A coloured plastic or something. A friend of mine at work gave me um, three of the whiz kids to paint for him. Um, I never did any more because I just hated them so much. They're just, they're just horrible miniatures to paint. Um, they're just uh, this horrible janky plastic that's all like bendable. So I had to spend a lot of time in like warm water casting it like properly where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then even after spraying it, when I was painting it, it was like it didn't have a base coat on. It was just, oh, it was not pleasant. I mean, this is... It's like a rubber. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. It definitely feels like a rubber. You can just wiggle that around without it breaking. It's nice, because it means your models won't break. That yeah, easily. But it means you're going to get a lot of cracked but... paint. If it bends, it means you're gonna, the paint's going to crack off. I can't say I'm very keen. What do you reckon, Sean? I'm not overly keen on that. Watch him tell us straight away what it is. It's very difficult to cut the actual bits of flash and stuff. Definitely not for the weak hearted. Yeah. I said it, it seems it seems to be a resin plastic mix of some sort. Mm. You don't just reckon that the people got the mix wrong when they were making the resin. After all that me saying how brilliant they were, the person who made the resin got the the, the mix completely wrong. Could be. They say I quite like it anyway because it's got just enough give in it for it to not immediately snap as soon as something yeah. looks it funny. Yeah, unfortunately. Try to cut the flash lines off and stuff makes it impossible. Sandpaper. Uh, I don't want to break sandpaper. I feel like you're putting... I don't, I, personally, I wouldn't I want to embarrass the sandpaper for it to, you know... For I me. haven't used sandpaper enough to be delicate enough that I'm not going to take away details I don't want to. Yeah, it's quite nice though. Um, yeah, the rules seem simple enough. That's what I thought when I read it. I thought, you know, everything's there. You can have it as complex or as simple as you like. And at first I was a bit confused as to all the 3 plus and 6 plus and whatever. Um, sorry, all the plus 2 and plus 3s. Yeah. But actually that is, everybody hits on a 6. And that's your modifier to hit. So like, the Royal Guard yeah. have a plus 3, which means they hit on 3s. Six, five, four, three. Yeah. But then they might be fighting somebody who's harder to hit, who's has got a modifier. Plus one. So, um, so their armor is six a standard plus one. A Roman legionary is like plus two or three. Mm. You know. So the more armor you have, the the better you are against certain things. And obviously, some weapons have got a modifier. So there's an awful lot of modifying. Which I thought was a bit weird and stupid compared to Warcry, which doesn't have modifiers. To what Sean pointed out, it gives you a lot more versatility for how good and bad units are. Yeah, 100 So, like, yeah, yeah. your basic peasant, as Sean said, basic peasant has no modifier. He hits on a six regardless. Hmm. But your own legionary hits on a three. But it can be modified be a bit more difficult if the peasant is behind some haystacks or something. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the peasant will only ever be able to hit on a six, and maybe worse. Mm. He'll never be able to get any better because he's just rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you train guys, you know, they've got a better to hit. So rather than giving, you know, like Roman, Roman legionaries an, an actual three up to hit, you've got, and then giving the, uh, the peasants like a six up to hit. You just give them all a standard and then... It seems a bit... Uh, it, it made a little bit of sense. I, I still think it's a bit jonky. I think it's easier to work out rather than... I know strength and toughness has changed an awful lot from when we used to play, but like, I remember the strength and toughness charts when you were like, time to look at what the role's going to mm -hmm. be. And yeah, it seems a lot easier just being able to go, right, my melee is a plus three. I've hit what, yeah. You what, take your armor safe. What's your armor? 
Mm. Oh, Leonidas. So you genuinely can have like a Spartan 300, aren't they? How many people can do that, eh? This is Sparta for his first move. <laughs> this is where we stand. This is where they die. Both quotes from the film 300. I like where these people are at. heads are. <laughs> Using the cinema to her advantage. Yeah, well, you're not going to put Leonidas in this without just quoting 300, are you, really? Yeah, they, could, they could quote the uh, original. Whatever that was called. The first film. Was it in black and white or something? I couldn't tell you. Again, I don't know if Sean's going to jump in on this, but I'm fi I think based off a documentary that I watched a long time ago with my father, that in the actual kind of battle that went on with the, the famous 300, Leonidas died really early on. And like, for a couple of days, they were just fighting over his body. Like, they went and got his body and they were bringing it back. And then they lost his body in a charge. And then they went and then did a counter charge to get his body back. Oh, right. I didn't know and that. yeah, like, Leonidas was dead um, quite early on. And then the second in command pretty much did most of most of it. But obviously he's not infamous because Leonidas took them there. I don't know whether you've got any dog in this fight, Sean, whether you know any better than me, but I'm fairly certain I remember watching that in a documentary. Oh well they doing his Wikipedia, I'm afraid. Okay. One thing that did upset me was they didn't tell you the whole story. Like, literally, it wasn't just 300. Yeah. I mean, in that, 300 Spartans go and stand there and then take the whole... But there was actually a huge group, um, army behind them. But in... They were a small part who just um, basically said, we will hold them back while you retreat. But and in, they... in the movie, that's based off the Frank Miller comic. That's why it's all, like, comic -y in the background. Okay. So that's more of a comic rather than, you know, like, a historical documentary. Because, I mean, as a historical documentary... They're not going out in a battle with oiled abs. I don't know, they might. <laughs> I know that I would. <laughs> uh, like, I guess there's an awful lot of the stuff that, like, the Saracens throw at them that are like, would they just have, like, elephants and rhinos and, like, explosives that they're just throwing around? Nah. Well, they might do. Yeah, but... I don't feel like... Because he did have... Um, he had con con conquered an awful lot of land. And so he had war of elephants and he had Persian bombers and stuff. Yeah, it just it's just how it reflects it, if you know what I mean. Wow, these guys were super fun on sculpting wangs. Oh yeah, no, they, they do like the wangs. It seems like historical seems to just do wangs more and... I wonder if it's just like a load of gays. <laughs> load I've of yet gays to see any ladies in this, but again, in historical combat, I don't know how many ladies I'd see. Other than I'm kind of surprised that, considering they're doing Celts, like Boudicca's not in it, because isn't she like one of the most famous She's like. Britain. Yeah, but like, isn't she like the Is most. She's not in the Britain area. I'll have a look, but. Is she in the Britain area? Yeah, Britain's one of the ones. But I didn't see her, and again. Like, is she not, like, the most famous commander for the Britons? Uh, that I'm aware of? Technically, yeah. Yeah, she's... Yeah, she's right there, don't worry about it. She's there? <laughs> so am I, it's fine. Yeah, wasn't he the guy from the first invasion? Karak... Karak Takus. Maybe, yeah. Death to the invaders is his big thing, so possibly. Is this the invasion of... I think I saw a... A documentary about the first invasion by Caesar, and uh, it was just a whole carve up, and it was quite embarrassing for them. I remember. I don't it wasn't know. quite Vinny VC BT. It was more like if you Vinny VC went away. If you remember the show a long time ago, and it was like a show where three people went onto it, and then they were against three other people. And they basically had like Rome Total War. <gasps> yes. Yeah. And I remember they basically three people won with Boudicca and they one of the guys was a history teacher and he did just her exact tactic of like the Romans were in a long line 
and he, he just like punched through the line at different points and just split them off from each other and then he was just going through them with chariots and stuff and he and then like at the end when they were doing the wrap up he was like because that's what she did and it was like it was super easy to win just like why did, did you do that because that's what she did I remember that show and I really enjoyed that show and then what was it called I couldn't tell you but I know like I used to sit and watch it every single the engine they used is what they made the game room total war out of but I'm guessing it wasn't as interesting to watch the show when you could just play it at home true true I thought it was quite interesting, like, when they were, we need orders! And the, the person in command is there going, oh, well, um, oh, um, yeah, we need orders! <laughs> oh, well, uh, mm. like, really indecisive to try to decide. And, yeah, you just lost all your cavalry because they didn't have any orders. But didn't they, did, why didn't they respond? You didn't give them orders. Yeah, that did seem a little bit, there were like, multiple occasions where, like, But a yeah. lot of forces would either flee. They do nothing because they weren't. They didn't want to go against what the commander was. No, they could retaliate, but then the commander might send orders to go and do something else. They're just hammering us with bows and arrows, but our guys are not doing anything. It was like, I don't know how realistic this is that people would just stand and be shot at and wouldn't move. Like even in like well, normally, you stood and got shot and ran away. Even in like the musket era, where they stood like ten paces away from each other and shot themselves, shot each other with muskets. They wouldn't just stand there and be shot with muskets and be like, well, we're losing, guys. Like, even then, they'd be like, let's book it. Let's fire back. Which, again, when you look at warfare, I think that's the craziest time for warfare, when you literally walk two gun lines, like, 15 feet away from each other, each other, and you just shot each other point-blank with guns. Mm -hmm. I think mean, that, as far as military tactics go now, to look at that, I think that's insane. And to think that was state state of the art at the time. Yeah, and then like, I, I'm sure if you brought those people up to where we are now, they'd think that what we do is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it would be interesting to see what what ha what would happen if you took a modern strategy back to those times. They ended up doing that. And did you know what's that like program that was like Ultimate Warrior? And it was pretty much like all they ever did was like this fighter versus this fighter and they did like all the different weapons and then they did like a, a, a reenacted like a this script that this guy built would basically fight them based off how effective the weapons were and you'd work out who was the ultimate fighter and then in one of the like special episodes they did like the it was a guy basically who was an ex he said special forces but he heavily implied it was the SAS but obviously mm -hmm. they can't say that they were in the SAS and he was like basically directing like a five man team with crossbows and he just took apart these other people because he was just using like proper tactics of like distract and get like decent flanking positions and stuff like that and it was fantastic to watch again if anybody watches it I think it's all on YouTube Ultimate Warrior was a great show just because like the things they showed you of what like weapons did they were constantly getting the ballistics gel out and they were like so this is what an axe would do to the human body and they were like wang um, and they did a really cool one which was pirates versus knights and that was really cool to watch because pirates. yeah because they had like black powder weapons and like the knights were cocky all the way through it and then like they did the test with the blunderbuss and they did a plate mail chest and he walked up to the blunderbuss and shot it and like it was all the smoke and crap like that and the knights were laughing and then there was a hole like right there through the breastplate where one of the balls had just burst through the breastplate and he was like, you'd be dead. And it, and it was like, it doesn't matter that 90% of the ball bearings bounced off, you're still dead. Mm -hmm. And it, it was... Because a, that one went through. Yeah, and it was, it, they just did like this whole thing all the way through and then it basically worked out that pirates just had a more effective set of weapons than knights. Yeah, I think the best one they had is like the Morning Star. Like this guy, this professional weapons guy, used the Morning Star on like a pig, and he just obliterated this pig. Like one swing, he just ripped all of his innards out. Oh wow! And I was like, what? So yeah, if anyone gets a chance, I think for a while they were on Netflix, but I don't know whether they're still there now. Ultimate Warrior. If you're into the historical stuff, great program to watch. I'll give you a better, a better idea about all this sort of stuff. Well, yeah, hundred percent. They did Roman legionaries. I know that they've done Roman legionaries, and I know they did Celts because I watched the Celt one, and the guy they had on that was like the Celt expert. 
he was possibly one of the biggest men I've ever seen in my life. And Fat or muscular? Just he, like hugely muscular, and he was basically you know how they do like, like Celtic Olympics. Yeah. He was basically like a champion in that. And then all of the test results, every time the guy who did the script was like, so I'm dialing back some of the test results because as much as the Claymore is an effective like sword, currently the guy we have swinging it in the studio has arms like fucking tree trunks. And that's not reflective of what it would be like. So <laughs> they, I think it was Kel, uh, Celtic Warrior versus Zulus because they did the like, you know, the Zulu bamboo shield. Yeah. They did that in front of a ballistics gel. And the guy with the Claymore went for a swing and he almost went all the way through the shield and all the way through the body. He was like past the spine when he stopped. So that guy was pretty dead. Yeah, he basically cleaved somebody in two. And then, like I said, the guy was like, maybe we don't put that into the system because not everybody was as ripped as this guy. But even so, the Claymore <laughs> just went straight through that shield. Uh, and I think the Zulus lost that one. It was a pretty fair weapon at the Claymore. Yeah. I mean, you just think about... I mean, I can't imagine swinging it. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't very wi widely used. Because it's really difficult to build one. It was, yeah, it was only the, the laws really that wielded them. That's why, even though in things like Braveheart, everyone's got a claymore. Yeah. If you go to the Battle of uh, Culloden and stuff, the, there's only a couple of claymores that were found in that sense because um, it was like the, the leader of each warband had a claymore. Yeah. So. Sounds more expensive. Yeah. Most people were pitchforks and stuff. So the few guys who claim loss did wreak havoc, but the majority of the army was just as, really... As someone that actually did blacksmithing, and I've looked into kind of medieval blacksmithing just to see the difference from what we've got today, making a claymore now is difficult, and we have like pneumatic tools to do it. Making a claymore back then, not impossible. It just, it's crazy to me that they could make such a huge piece of steel and temper it in a way and keep an edge on it insane levels of craftsmanship hmm. absolutely insane it's the same way so it's you... much respect to uh... yeah 100% just because to actually temper that because you've seen what you've hit anyone with like a steel bar it just whoop and bends like a banana to have something with an edge on it that doesn't bend like a banana that's almost 4 feet long crazy levels crazy levels of skill based in that I don't hit many people with bits of steel. <laughs> well, unless you're caught in the shop. When the manager comes out. Yeah. I think when the zombie apocalypse comes, I'll definitely get a bit of steel. Probably a claymore and uh, get some muscles to swing it. I know a gentleman and he has a bunch of stuff that he's bought for his house in case of the zombie apocalypse. And the one that he has is he has a blue crowbar underneath his bed. A blue crowbar? Yeah, it's like it's like a crowbar, but obviously it's like... Blue. Um, like a jet-painted blue or something like that. Okay. He just has it under his bed in case the zombie apocalypse starts. I don't think I'm that prepared about anything. I've got plans. I've got like a rough plan, but I kind of feel like... I'd just be that bloke in the supermarket where I'd be like looking at Kiev's and somebody would bite me on the arm and I'd be like, fuck. And then three days later, the zombie apocalypse would start. I'd be like, well, that's me gone. Oh, I def no. I definitely <laughs> don't feel like I'd be one of those people three years down the line, like running for supplies. I just don't think that's me. I feel like I'm gone. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to have a bit of realism in life and where you think, I'm not Rick from The Walking Fucking Dead. The other problem I have with the zombie apocalypse yeah obviously this is all to do with SPQR because we all know it happened in those days <laughs> I'll be honest if they did a zombie expansion I would be really interested to see that um, so interestingly for the fantasy game they made they have got zombies they've got zombie elves I think it is or something like that it might not be zombie elves, it could be zombie anything, but they have got zomb 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 zombies. I have zombies no something. idea why they've not made a game, like, a really decent, like, you know, war game, where it is something like that, where it's like medieval fighters versus zombies and stuff, because they did that documentary, or, no, not documentary, sorry, 
definitely not a documentary, but it was a show on Netflix where it was zombies in like um, feudal Japan. And it's like samurais fighting zombies. And that is a sick show. Hmm. Absolutely. Like just watching like samurais fighting zombies and obviously like the way of the samurai is to fight someone who's also fighting in the way of the samurai. And it's just like them preparing and a zombie just running at them and they're like, they just don't know what to do. Because obviously they're not fighting someone who's also fighting them with a sword. So it's just how it kind of like breaks down. Really great show if anyone gets... I don't know the name of it, but I'll probably check it or Sean can check it for me. A great show if you get a chance to watch on Netflix. Okay. Um, it's subtitled, but again, it's just how it all goes through. In all fairness, it's just Samurai, so it might be subtitled or not. Yeah, yeah, 100%. The characters are really interesting in it as well. And like, there's... It done really well. I really enjoyed it for like a Netflix show. But yeah, this, uh, what was that? Uh, the One Dilemma. Yeah. The One Dilemma for your zombie plan. This is a One Dilemma. Do you... Let's say you're caught out and about. Yeah. Do you go home to see if your partner's there, not a zombie, on the chance she might not even be there, she might have gone out for the day or something, that's a big question. Knowing maybe you might get caught on the way home in traffic and made into a zombie in a massive rush. Or do you find somewhere safe and forget about them? Uh, and just hope that they're okay. I feel like to be asked this question between the two of us is different. Again, I've been with my partner for a very long time. But you have children. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a different question for yourself. Again, I don't think I would because I don't know where she is sometimes and I worry. If I knew that, like, I worry now and there's a semblance of order to the world as it is. If it was a zombie apocalypse and, like, people were out there looting and stuff, I, I don't think I'd sleep. The same question for yourself. Again, you have children, so I'm guessing that would be at the forefront of your mind. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a situation where I hope that I would be able to go home. Yeah, yeah, because you spend the majority of time here, but you live in Sheffield. Obviously, I am one of those that thinks about this sort of thing a lot. Yeah. I don't know why, but I do. Now, if I'm at the shop at work, yeah. I definitely wouldn't stay in this shop, because no, there's... a zombie horde would get through there in no time. For people that can't see, the front of Matt's shop is just glass. Um, definitely, I've got the key for next door still. Okay. That's part of my zombie apocalypse plan. Um, basically, got the big shot. I said to her when we moved, do you mind if I keep a spare key just in case you lose yours? And she was like, yeah, sure. I'm thinking, yeah, great. When the apocalypse comes, I can get shutters. <laughs> and there's a basement in here yeah. that leads through, like, all of it. It's all bricked up in places. Okay. So, at a push, you could, like, uh, kind of go from one room to the next, sort of Yeah, thing. yeah. Discounting... <laughs> this area um, of course I might put a shirt on the front at some point anyway which makes it zombie proof yeah, yeah. Um, but if I was here I would definitely stay in one of them I can't imagine driving from here to Sheffield in a zombie apocalypse because there's that many main roads that will be clogged up and you've, you've seen the films nose to nose and then zombies come down you've the line of cars you've got to go near the M1 you, really? they've got to go to the M1 down the parkway and even that, I've got to go down the back roads. And the back roads, you don't know if someone's crashed a car on a corner. Parkway's never going to be. You might get stuck and zombified there. So if if I'm at work, I think I, I'd struggle because I, I take the M1 up to Barnsley. Yeah. And again, I think the M1 would just be chaos. Chock a block. Now, if I was in Sheffield, um, there's quite a lot of places in Sheffield that you can hide from zombies. Yeah, yeah, 100%, um, yeah. And... There's a few of the roads that you could probably navigate, as long as they weren't too bad. But even then, mm. I'd probably see if I had a, a mobile phone reception. Had a mobile phone reception, you could ring your partner. Obviously, at that point, though, oh, that's it's picture. a bit like at Christmas, isn't it? Or New Year. New, at New Year's, you're trying to ring somebody. Yeah, there's too much. The networks are busy. Too much frequency in the air. So... You won't be able to get through to your partner because ev everybody will be ringing the partner. Mm. So, I think possibly the best thing to do 
is maybe have an agreement with your partner that if they're at home, they stay home and lock all the doors. Yeah. And I find somewhere safe. Mm. And after three or four days, when it's calmed down... I don't think in three or four days it's calmed down. I honestly... For how I think of a zombie apocalypse going, I think the first two weeks is pandemonium. I think the first two weeks is chaos town. I think that's where it just goes off. Like, no end for two weeks. I mean, if it happens a bit like you've seen Fear the Walking Dead. I have seen Fear the Walking Dead. If it happens like that, that's pretty simple. Mm. You get home, she's safe, you're safe, shut down, maybe visit the local shops, get some food in, because it's quite slow. Yeah. You see reports on the TV of, oh, someone just bit a chunk out of someone's neck. Ah, oh, it's perfectly fine. Mm. You see that, and then it's like a matter of, what, two or three weeks before things go bad? So you could probably go, get a load of supplies, barricade yourself in somewhere, and sit it out for the first few weeks. Yeah, I think as well, there's a lot of stuff that comes down to, is it an airborne contagion? Are the zombies runners? Like, yeah. I think if, Is it like if it's Resident like, Evil? If it's 28 days later zombies... Oh God, that's no, a, no chance. There's a very different level to Walking Dead Shamblers. Yeah. Like, the ones that are full pelt... I wouldn't survive just because, again, the camera can see I'm not the best at cardio. I couldn't outrun something that was running full pelt at The me. thing is, a lot of the zombies in 28 Days Later were fast. Oh, yeah. Like, that scene in... Because they're it, pretty superhuman, aren't they? The is it 28 Days Later or 28 Weeks Later where he jumps out of the house at the start and he's running across that field? Then he gets to the boat. Yeah, and they're just running full pelt behind him. I think that's 28 Days because isn't that the house... Where they all meet up at, and then one yeah. of the old lady lets one of them in. Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. I've not watched it in a while, but that and I can I knock can... at the door, and there's a woman outside of the kid, and oh, please, and he's like, don't let him in, don't let him in. And then she opens the door, and then one of them's got bit, and then I remember that scene all really the zombies well, come to them, where he's just running on his own across the field, and they're just all coming, and I just think, and, it, and they're just converging, aren't they? In a scene, in a bit like that, I wouldn't survive. I know for a fact I wouldn't. And I feel like those are, of the zombies available, I think the 28 days later, like, zombies are the worst kind. Yeah. Because they're just, it's all about move and just pure aggression. But, then again, the 28 days later, they're all just normal zombies, that fast. Yeah. Resident Evil. All the different species All of the variants, yeah. That's pretty bad. I feel, like, the Walking Dead ones, it's all about just not taking them as a horde. It's all about taking them as a singular unit. Yeah. And you could do a lot. Killing them one by one. Yeah. Like, I remember watching a big documentary about zombies that was saying, if it's like Walking Dead zombies, the best thing that you can do is wear steel toe cap boots, and then if one's walking at you, just kick its knee out. Because it's not going to defend its knee, just kick its knee out, and then it falls to the ground, and then you just stab it in the head while it's on the ground. That's, you could do rinse and repeat that tactic non-stop, just kick its knee out. Mm -hmm. because it's never going to defend that knee and it's always walking at you so boop it goes down boosh in all, in all fans a spear yeah spear blunt object just a blunt object to just knock it I honestly think a blunt object would work better than something like an axe I was quite surprised that in The Walking Dead no one made spears except for the people at Lakeside yeah. there wasn't many people with spears I was like I mean the spear in general um, against an unarmed combatant that's not blocking a spear blow that's not blocking a spear blow I mean even blocking a spear blow is difficult Yeah. I was watching a documentary about different weapons and they pitched the spear against all the weapons Yeah. all the single combat we weapons and probably about 8 out of, nine, eight, 8 out of 10 times the person with the swords and the clubs and whatever else uh, didn't get past the spear it's because you keep somebody. If, if you're a trained, if, if you're a trained spear master, yeah. the trained spear master kind of like does that with the spear, yeah. so that you can't duck and weave. Yeah. Somebody holding it like that really firmly, it's you a can static thing, yeah. you can hit it with your sword and then get by it. Yeah. Whereas if, if they're doing that, you've got a lot of you know it's very very difficult to single it out. Once you get past the spear point, you're dead. Yeah. But definitely, if you horde of zombies that are moving like the walking dead you could probably easily 
Yeah, I was Straight surprised the face. how many people in that show use stuff like machetes and axes. Because there's somebody that use axes, they get stuck yeah. super easy. And I feel like if you whack that into a brain, you're just going to get stuck in the skull every time. Same as knives. Yeah, I mean like... Unless the blade's got the groove. Yeah, to, or to like it. you're going in low, but again, like stabbing somebody on the top of the head with a knife, you're Trust. not pulling that back out easy. No. It's the same. That's why I don't understand why they don't have more like blood trauma, because I understand it takes a lot of swing, but surely you should be... If you're in any zombie apocalypse, you should be fighting zombies on your own territory, somewhere where you decide to fight zombies, and that should just be open space. Mm-hmm. Like... I don't know. I always find it funny how they always get caught out. Yeah, they always just go in a place. But again, that's because it's a show, obviously. Let's go into this place and have nobody on watch. Or the person on watch is just like so laxadaisical. He's just... got he's got past me. It's like there's no other way to make him a friend. Oh, this. Oh, yeah, shit! I just let seven thousand zombies go by me because I was just looking at my feet. That's why I really like Zombieland because Zombieland is a film. It, it, it looks Not more Woody, Woody Allison. yeah it looks a lot more realistic at zombies as far as like people are constantly on their guard all the way through that film mm -hmm. like at no point are they like fuck it let's just let our guard down yeah I like the bit where uh, thingy dresses up like a zombie oh Bill Murray Bill get Murray. shot <laughs> get shot and they're like oh crap you killed Bill Murray they make a number two of that aren't they yes looks quite good yeah they made a, a terrible like series that Amazon produced, and they couldn't um, pay for any of the original cast. Like, the person they cast as Woody Harrelson was like a fat guy with a beard and hair. Didn't look anything like Woody Harrelson. They did three episodes and cancelled it. And oh, then wow. it's been shelved ever since. And then they just, obviously, it's finally come back out for them to make a season two. That's crazy. We haven't been talking about SPQR for almost 45 minutes now. So, like, Josh will cut that bit. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no viewers. Wow. At least we don't have to worry about people being bored. No, no. Um, obviously, SPQR isn't on everyone's top priority. No, I think it's one of those things where, especially when it comes down to game reviews, it's like um, the one that obviously my missus is massively into board games, and she watches Dice Tower, I think it is. Um, and his views vastly differ like he does some new games that are coming out that everyone's interested in he's lopsided yeah because I thought when you were going to have a look at him his base like his feet are like that are like pigeon toed like he's not flat like all the others are flat his feet are not flat he stood on the, the brink of the hill hmm but yeah, the Dice Tower guy, his views massively, like, from, like, games that people are interested in have, like, big views, and then he does, like, really small indie games that no one watch, that nobody looks at, if you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Because it's just, no one's looking at it. I think he stood on the brow of the hill. That's how it should be. Trying to shave it underneath. They've even got one foot lower than the other. Mm. I feel like I should cut that out. I'll be honest, I like the Bowman more, a lot more now, now that they're based. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, these look nice now. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I'd be certainly excited to have a game of this and kind of see see where it stands up as far as one of the new skirmish games. Because I play a lot of skirmish games. So I'd be excited to see where this is. I'm just not a very big historical gamer, I must admit. Like, of the games that I play, I don't play any historical games. Whereas I know, obviously, there's quite a few historical games that you play. Mm -hmm. My dad's a big historical war gamer, and he plays a lot of historical games. I don't think he doesn't play any fantasy games now. Oh, right. Yeah, he just, well, it's, it's just not what he's into. I think he's a bit, I think he might be interested in that. Um, not even the Inquisitor game? No, he doesn't play that, no. 
It's just not something he's ever had a big interest in. It. I know, like I say, he might be interested in that new, the new one coming out because he's a big fan of aircraft. You know the Imperialis. Oh yeah. Aircraft one. He's a huge aircraft fan, so I think I'm gonna get that because I know he's he's interested in aircraft battles. But no, he's just not a big fantasy. Is it aeronautical? Yeah, something like that. It's basically their X-wing, isn't it? Really, mm. he's just gonna play like X-wing and look like X-wing, but. Like I said, now you've taken it off, you can see that his feet are not at the same angle. No. How random. Very. I'll just cut one of his feet down. And cover it in flat. <laughs> not all then. But glue it and force it out. How'd it work, Shonster? As much as I can. It's always hard at work. Mm. We've run out of bubble wrap, so I can't wrap anything up. I'll do that and then spray it with glue. One day we'll get rid of these chairs, Sean. Hey, I'm glad to grab the activator, would you, Sean? Now that you sat down. It's only got a little lot. So, what, are you a Warcry fan or not then, Sean, at all? Have you I actually not played, played it yet? No. No, okay. Do you like any of the teams that have come out, or...? <laughs> not really. Chaos isn't my thing. No, it's not really my thing, but I like, I like models from the teams. I don't think a team has come out yet where I like every miniature. I'm kind of excited for this one that's coming out that's all about fire. That sounds fun. Sounds like Zinch to me. Yeah. Or, well, there's the other team that's coming out that are just big guys. I'm kind of interested to see that. I like those a lot more now. They didn't last, don't they? When they're, when they're based up. Yeah, properly based. Mm. Definitely. So, um, we're probably not going to do much more on these, are we, tonight? No, I wouldn't say so. Probably build them up and do a review next week of the game after playing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you want to come back and do that? Yeah, I can certainly come back and play again. Um, I don't know how long I can stay for because I fly to Vegas on Monday. Look at you. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited Look for it. Look at you. I wonder if you want me to take one of your mugs. To Vegas? Yeah. One of the last Bastion mugs? Yeah. Why not? So we could Bastion in Vegas, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Last Bastion visit, visits Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, we're the hotel that looks onto the Bellagio fountains. I like it. So I, I, can, like I it. can have my morning drink with the last Bastion mug. Look at do it, it man. Yeah, Absolutely do it. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do that. And just, I'm here next weekend, so just remind me. Or I'll remind you, because you've got a lot more to think about. There you go. Pilum is the singular. Yeah. And Pila is the plural. That's it. Plural there. means two, doesn't it? There we go. Doesn't say plural, just means collectively called Pila. Ah, there we one go. One heavy and one light, throwing them at charging enemies. The light Pilum was thrown first, then followed by the heavier weapon at shorter ranges. Used correctly, the Pila could cripple a charge before it reached the rim of the line. Hmm. Dropping that knowledge. That knowledge, right on it. So, I'm just going to try and answer all my questions earlier as to making your guys. List. Making, making your list. So I was like, hmm, all these, all these options. Hmm. So, if you have leather armour, it's plus one. If you have a small shield, there's no bonus. Large shield is no bonus to armour. So what does a large shield do for you? Why would you ever have it then? Grants you parry two. Apparently. Parry two advanced rule on page 19. I'm guessing parry two would relate to people with spears, that sort of thing. Uh, parry. 
The weapon is well suited for knocking aside an enemy's attack. You may force your opponent to re-roll one of his melee attacks for every model in the unit that has this special rule. If the number follows the term parry, this is how many melee attacks the opponent may be forced to re-roll. So, Romans have got the large shield, which yes. means they can make you parry two attacks, force you to re-roll two successful hits. That's not too shabby. They are not going down. Unless it's on a, uh, a Celtic lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, creating a warband, minions, playing a campaign. I'm looking at arming them. What can you have? It's got scenarios there. Should we do a scenario next week? I think we should do like one of the scenarios, yeah, that'd be cool. We'll make up uh, the box set and do a scenario with it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> At least with great plastic models. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's just got the armies. Caesar's legions. So far, I can't, I've not seen anything about actually arming you guys. That's a Heroes. That's, if you go through, if you have a look at the top, it tells you what armies you're in. So you're in Macedonia then. Yeah, no, but no, arming them. Arming them? It's in front of armour. Where you were in yeah, armour. On these cards, it had all the options. Where options here. So let's find the gar garlic. The garlics, the, ga the Gaelic. The Gaelic, the gays. Yeah, equipment. Is it Germania? Gaul. Gaul, that's it, Gaul. So what was it on this card? This is, I'm just, I was just picking fault with these cards, that's all. Uh, uh, a Gaul warrior. Why? Yeah. See, it doesn't give you any limitation. No, but I think the limitation is based off of, say, you and I did a 300 denarii battle. Then it's 9 denarii mm. plus more denarii. It, it's like putting melter guns in your squad and stuff. Yeah, but you can have one melter gun in a tactical squad. Y it's like... Yeah, but it doesn't look like any of that special weapons. Can you than... have short spears, javelins, but... and your sword? And your large shield. Yeah, but like it's saying there, like one one model in each unit can purchase like a horn. Hmm. So that's like special weapons. But then again, in a lot of like the eighth edition codexes, you can get like this gun and this gun and then this gun and then this gun. Tell you what, chainmail shirts are expensive. You can get headshots. Wow. I just skipped through and I was like, oh, headshots. I'm looking at some of the weapons, like, it looks like a... Uh... Whoa! Chainmail shirt is plus three armour value. Chainmail, also remarkably difficult to build. Uh, great axe. And Kel uh, the Gaul warriors have got the choice of chainmail. You'd just arm everybody with chainmail, wouldn't you? I mean, it makes them I don't know. 12 points you, more. You're playing as Gaul, I believe, or I am. I don't think I'm... I don't know what my Imperial Romans get, but uh, I don't think I've got any... I think I've got, have I got Legionaries? It's the card saying. Yeah, Le Legionaries. Yeah, Legion. I mean, you could do a Praetorian Guard, probably, but I think... Chainmail shirt, yeah, I've got... So the Chainmail shirt, so you can literally make I've got 24 points for a Legionary. I've got Chainmail shirts already. So we have an armour of three already. For 12 points, I can make them armour 3. I'm already armour 3. Now, you, you've probably got more rules than these guys, but... We've got, like, shield wall and stuff like that, but then, like, we're 24 denarii starting and you're 9 denarii starting. So, for 23 denarii, so 1 denarii less, I can have the same stat line except for bravery. That seems a bit strange. Because we'll have the same equipment. Protect the basic and just add chainmail to the goals. You're only one point dif difference. We've got a large shield as well, is that what you've got? 
The large shield, yeah. We've got strength in numbers and wild charge. You've got to stew it out and shield wall. <laughs> or re-roll armor checks for, for being into studio formation against range attack. Uh, Testudos where it like it's above in it. The picture above is a Testudo is where yeah. they put the shields on top in it. It's where they met the turtle. And if you're in shield wall, you get a bonus parry attack. So that's parry three for your shield. Yeah, so that's pretty good. You have to be ten side by side. Which I which I would every time. <laughs> the naked warriors get plus one melee. Man, they're not afraid of anything. <laughs> Those guys are afraid of anything. Taking advantage of the unnerving sight running towards your enemy with your willy out. <laughs> oh, they're like orcs. They, they get the courage from the amount of models. If you've got 10 or more models, you get plus one bravery. 20 or more models, you get plus two bravery. And then wild charge gets a bonus melee dice for each model in the unit, regardless of whether they get into contact with an enemy model. A unit of warriors that charges gains a bonus melee dice for each model in the unit. So that basically doubles the amount of attacks you get. Hmm. We'll have to find out what units means. Because yeah, if models? you fight individually, then that would be like every guy gets, if there's 20 men, every guy gets 20 attacks plus his own. But if you. Which seems very broken. <laughs> if you do it like. Units in like you got a unit of ten, ten attacks, plus an extra ten for having ten men. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, we'll do some research. We'll find out, and uh, we'll come back next week with some mo models built up and uh, have a go at playing. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm cool. cool. Awesome. Well, we'll fa we'll say farewell. Sorry for the gam the babbling <laughs> shit about zombies and weapons and stuff but I hope, I hope you enjoyed it um, you probably can't see what I've been doing but I've been making the little models um, there'll be a picture on so, the Facebook page we're going to put a picture up anyway if you can see him you can't see him, he's blurry, never mind so we'll put a picture on our Facebook page of some of these models hopefully painted and um, even just in the flesh and yeah, see you next week and as usual, like and subscribe and, and stuff <laughs> Bye. Bye for now, guys. How do I stop it? You click end stream on the